Testing is one essential tool to help contain the spread of the coronavirus. But nearly two years into the pandemic, high demand for at-home tests have left major retailers struggling to keep kits stocked in stores. Here's what you need to know about these at-home tests, including where to get them, how they work, and when to take them. Viral tests are categorized based on what they look for. Molecular tests look for the virus's genetic material, while antigen tests look for viral proteins. The rapid antigen tests have one big advantage, which is that a consumer can actually use it in their home and get an answer in less than half an hour. So the rapid antigen tests have convenience going for them and relatively low cost and a, a rapid result. Sort of like a pregnancy test, if viral antigens are detected on a rapid antigen test, a line on a test strip turns dark. If you go to the grocery store, you go to the CVS and you buy one of the a rapid antigen tests, you see that it comes with two tests. And the reason it comes with two tests is not so you can test two people. It's actually that you're in order to increase the, the sensitivity and the accuracy of the test, you're supposed to test yourself twice. And what you do is, let's say, I'm going to go visit my mom tomorrow. I will test today, 24 hours before, and then I'll test myself again tomorrow right before I go in there. PCR tests, a type of molecular test, are widely considered to be more reliable. However, most require a laboratory setting and can take up to several days to return a result. It's really the gold standard for diagnosis in many infectious diseases. The problem with PCR tests is that it detects you know, genetic material of the virus. So even after the virus is gone, you may still have remnants of virus. I mean, that's the reason why after you've been diagnosed, we recommend people don't repeat a PCR for about 90 days because it could potentially be positive and yet you're not infectious. Despite both tests accuracy, testing too soon after being exposed to someone with COVID-19 can produce a false negative. This is because a person's viral load changes over the course of the infection. Most of the time, you'd have to wait about three to five days after you had contact with an individual to be absolutely sure that you're not infected. These test kits, which generally cost anywhere from $10 to $30, can be purchased online or at a local pharmacy, but there's no guarantee of availability. The reason that we've tried to ramp up testing in the month of December is twofold. Number one, the Omicron variant is more infectious than its uh, antecedent variants were. So it becomes quite urgent to get folks tested if the virus is circulating at a higher frequency. The second reason is the travel inherent in the end of the school semesters at the time that family travel ramps up for Hanukkah and uh, Christmas and New Year's. So at the end of the day, you've had more demand. Some critics say the U.S. has failed to make tests as readily accessible as they are in other countries. In, in a public health emergency like the one we have, this test should be readily available, just as easy to get as you can get a face mask or you can get you know many other things. President Biden responded to the supply scramble by announcing that a half billion free rapid tests will start being delivered to homes in January. We'll be getting these tests to Americans for free. And we'll have websites where you can get them delivered to your home. This is a good strategy to allow you to, to do certain things. I mean, to, to have family gatherings, to be able to open schools, to be able to have business running. I mean, a bunch of things could be done if we use this test in an appropriate way. It's such a critical tool to fight, you know, this Omicron uh, spike.